So we proceed to our second talk. It will be given by uh, uh, Georgi Igrevich Sharigin. Argument shift method in uh, UGLD, please. <clears throat> okay. Um, so um, I would like to begin with um, expressing my gratitude to the organizers for granting me this opportunity to make a talk. And although it is not quite related to the elliptic problems, I hope it will be interesting to the most part of the public. Um, so we begin with some very elementary discussion. Let M uh, pi be a Poisson manifold, where pi is a Poisson bivector, um, which verifies the standard equation, uh, it's hold and bracket with itself vanishes. In this case, we can define on the space of functions on M the Poisson um, bracket by the by the formula uh, which is given here, right? We just plug in differentials of two functions f and g into the bivector pi, and we obtain a new function. And um, in, by virtue of pi being uh, verifying this, this, this condition, uh, this, this operation will actually verify the Jacobi identity. It will also be um, anti skew symmetric and will verify Leibniz rule. Let us denote by z, mod z sub pi of m the center of the Lie algebra of smooth functions with respect to this Poisson bracket. That is to say, a space of all functions on m such that the Poisson bracket with anything vanishes. Such functions are often called Casimir functions or just Casimirs in uh, physical literature, especially. Let psi be a vector field on M, which verifies the condition written condition one. That is, um, so the first Lie derivative of pi um, along psi does not vanish. It can vanish, but we don't uh, need this. We actually would prefer it not to vanish. But the second Lie derivative of pi with respect to psi vanishes identically. Um, <clears throat> and can show that in this case, Pi sub psi, uh, the Lie derivative of pi, uh, um, will also be a Poisson by vector, and it will be compatible with uh, the original Poisson by vector pi. Um, but it is not that uh, property which actually uh, we are interested in. Uh, the main purpose of having this structure on a Poisson manifold is the following is 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 is, is containing the following result, uh, which I think uh, in this in this form was um, has first been uh, observed by uh, by Wimberg by but in, uh, in in a in a very important particular case where M is a Lie uh, algebra um, has first appeared in uh, the famous paper by Mishinka and Famenka in 1978. So here is this result. Let f and g be two central functions on M, and let psi be the vector field which verifies this condition one. In that case, for all integer numbers p and q, well, positive integers, of course, um, we have this equation. Observe that unless pi of psi, pi sub psi, vanishes identically, these functions are not central anymore, but they continue to commute. Um, it is um, interesting that this result, that this equation, this uh, this can be, this this formula can be proved very easily and very straightforwardly by simple uh, induction on p and q. Uh, it begins with just this equation that when you have a uh, vector field psi acting on a Poisson by, uh, bracket of two functions, it is equal to this combination of expressions. And this uh, applies to any uh, uh, pi vector, actually to pi sub psi as well. And in particular, uh, it means that if we apply psi to f comma g sub psi, then we shall have the same result here, but here, except for the last term, which vanishes identically because second Lie derivative of pi with respect to psi vanishes by condition. So now adding, applying this equation one after another several times, we obtain 
this equation and, and actually also this, but we are interested more in this original, in this equation first. Um, this, is, this is called, this is usually called the classic argument sheet method, and it allows you to construct uh, large community of subalgebras in the Poisson algebras of functions. And the main example of uh, this situation is given by a uh, co-joint representation of a Lie algebra G, uh, where the Poisson structure is given by identifying linear functions on G star with uh, elements of G, so that uh, the Lie bracket turns into the Poisson bracket on coordinates. Or dually, if we take the, take the point of view of bivectors, pi is equal to this combination of partial derivatives. And as you can see, coefficients at every pair of partial derivatives are linear. And that means that if you take any constant vector field psi and apply it to pi, you, the, fir the first time you get something non-zero, just um, which you, you should obtain just by replacing x, x, x k by xi k in this formula. But when you apply it second time, you obtain zero, nothing. Um, so for us, uh, even this case is pretty really very general for us. We can restrict our attention to the Lie algebra of general linear general linear Lie algebra GLD. We will denote its generators by L i j, and the commutation relations of these uh, equations of these elements will be equal to L i j. Well, it is just as given by formula two. I believe everybody knows this commutation relation, and uh, I will never pay any attention to the ground field of uh, Lie algebra. And uh, if you want, you can always assume that it is equal to R to C according to your own taste. There are two standard representations of this algebra. One is given by sending the generator Lij to the matrix unit Eij. The other one is conjugated, which sends Lij to minus Eij, Eji. Uh, but uh, so far, this is well known. Um, for us, it is important that we can actually go from um, Lie algebra GLD to the universal enveloping algebra of GLD uh, just by taking the same generators Lij uh, and now uh, just giving it, um, letting them vary from, uh, letting, letting, letting this, um, you know, letting them generate not a Lie algebra, but letting them generate a free associative algebra and then quotienting out the, the equation, uh, the relation one, two, relation two. And that gives you the universal developing algebra of GLD. And as everybody knows, I believe, uh, if you, this, this algebra is filtered by tensor powers of GLD in the construction. And it's, uh, uh, um, um, it's uh, associated, in, um, sorry, associated, Graded algebra is equal to the symmetric algebra of GLD. Yeah, both the um, junior, uh, the, the representations Rho and Rho bar extend to representations of universal enveloping algebra, and moreover, we have the co-multiplication of uh, universal enveloping algebra. This is standard. These are standard facts. Um, as I still already mentioned, uh, the symmetric algebra of uh, Lie algebra GLD, and more generally of any Lie algebra G is closely related to the universal enveloping algebra of that Lie algebra. Namely, there is a map, sigma, symmetrization map, which sends monomials of this form to the sums of elements in universal enveloping algebra uh, of this form. Sum is taken over all elements in the symmetric group. Um, and by poincare behoff bead theorem, the renowned poincare behoff bead theorem, this map is a linear isomorphism of G modules, not of, and of algebras, but not of algebras. In particular, one can show that the center, the Poisson center of G star is sent into the, into the usual center, the universal developing algebra. Uh, and the same goes for GLD. And we will restrict our attention to GLD. And in this case, we can actually very easily describe 
the uh, generators of the center of UGLD. For instance, there here are two standard sets of generators. First, you take the universal uh, characteristic polynomial where L is the matrix of generators and take the coefficients of this polynomial and then symmetrize them. Or you can take just traces of the matrix L. Uh, matrix is, L is just the matrix of Lij, just matrix of generators. And uh, both sets are widespread, uh, used in many uh, situations. Um, somehow the first set of generators is uh, more, uh, let's say, more popular than the second one, but the second one has its own advantages. So the main equation, the main equation which we address here uh, is um, the following question first asked by Weinberg in, in 1991. The question is as follows. Is there a way to rise the commutative subalgebra um, of argument shift, generated by argument shift, in SGLD to a commutative subalgebra in UGLD, uh, more generally in any Lie algebra, actually. Uh, and also, is it possible to raise the procedure, raise the uh, uh, the shifting operator, the derivation along the vector field from GLD, from usual Lie algebra, from, from usual classical world to the quantum world, to the universal enveloping algebra? So this has been studied by extensively throughout the years, and um, there are several results, results by Rybnikov, by uh, Tarasov, by Molev, and all these uh, uh, constructions, they take one or another set of generators, usually the first type, and show how to raise these generators to the universal enveloping algebra, uh, but no uh, construction of the shifting operator has ever been given. Um, uh, so I'm going to talk about this shifting operator, not just about the way you obtain the, uh, the, 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 the algebra, but rather the way you can obtain the, uh, the, the operator which generates this algebra. Uh, to this end, I will need the following theorem by Rybnikov, which uh, says that uh, the algebra a hat xi, which exists according to the results I cited to, by Rybnikov, by Molev, by Tarasov and others, uh, this algebra A hat xi in universal enveloping algebra, commutative algebra, exists and is uniquely determined by its quadratic part. In effect, this algebra is always equal to the centralizer of its quadratic part. And since this algebra actually exists, it means that this centralizer is commutative. And that's precisely the thing which we are going to use to prove our theorem. So I'm going to describe a way to raise the operator psi to an operator on universal enveloping algebra of GLD. And to this end, I need to describe the way I uh, will, uh, what I will do to replace the partial derivatives. And here is a, a, a suggestion, uh, a, a way to replace, to, to change them to something uh, which will act on the universal enveloping algebra. And these operators are called quasi-derivations. They exist, and it's the, their main property. But also their property, which is also very important, is this modified Leibniz rule. As you can see, the first two terms of the right-hand side, they are just uh, the usual Leibniz rule, but then they get a modification. An additional term, which is, um, I would say, deceivingly simple. Um, in fact, this term gives you infinitely many correction terms if you try to expand it further and further, but it can be written in a very short way. And these terms, this term actually uh, says that you have to co-multiply, so to say, the operator dij and take the apply the left side to, to f and the right side to g. You can do this in two different ways, and this gives you two different sets of positive derivations. We will concentrate on the first type, but the second time is by no mean worse. So you can actually show that these operators are well defined, and here is a, a very short check why when you apply these operators to the generating relations on UGLD, 
these generating relations actually vanish. And it's just straightforward computation. As you can see, nothing difficult there. Anybody can do this. Uh, so actually, these maps can be obtained in a different way. And here are two, uh, uh, two alternative constructions. Uh, so for instance, um, the first construction makes advantage of co-multiplication on UGLN, on UGLD. Here is here are some NL. I'm sorry, there are the, this uh, file is, is a compilation of two files. So sometimes I use, I speak about GLD, sometimes about GLN, but I hope you will forgive me this. Uh, and so you take advantage of the com of the co-multiplication of UGLN. Uh, you take a co-multiply UGLN. Then you consider the representation row on the right leg of this UGLN and identical map on the left leg. And you end up in the tensor product of matrices, because rho is representation in matrices, and UGLN. And tensor product of these two, two algebras can be interpreted as the matrix algebra of, algebra of matrices with entries in UGLN. And it turns out that this, this composition this composition can be actually is equal not to the operations dij itself, not to these quasi derivations. Sorry, where is this? Ah, not to the not not the quasi derivations themselves, but rather mm -hmm, this is equal to the sum of identical operator and the matrix of quasi derivations. You see, this is a matrix valued map from UGLN on UGLN. Uh, so entries of this matrix can be identified with quasi derivations, except for the diagonal elements, which are equal to the identity map plus this corresponding quasi derivation. Not very much to change, actually. Here is another way you can um, introduce the same operator, uh, which is actually, I think that the more ways you have, the more relations this operator should have with other branches of mathematics, and probably people will find some explanation, some you know other approaches, some other uh, um, applications of this operator. So we again uh, consider the operator which is equal to the sum of the matrix of quasi derivations and the identical operator. Now I take the symmetrization map, you and I uh, uh, symmetrize elements in symmetric el in, in the algebra. Of um, well, the symmetric algebra of GLD, I symmetrize them and set them to universal enveloping algebra. Then I apply this operator one plus d, and then I, so to say, desymmetrize it so that I end up in the matrices with entries in SGLD. So I have a map from SGLD to matrices with coefficients in SGLD, and this map can be identified easily with the help of the previous. With the, okay, with the previous construction, with just the map which you obtain by exponentiating the matrix of partial derivatives. You see, SGLD is a commutative algebra, so we have partial derivatives, well-defined operators on GLD. These operators commute with each other. They act, they behave actually just like any commutative variables. So you can take the matrix with entries equal to partial derivatives and exponentiated and that will give you a map from SGLD to matrices and this map can be identified with the composition on the left. So this is another way you can uh, obtain the same operator and actually it is not, I haven't ex exhausted even half of the constructions which lead to the same operations. Actually there are a couple more at least which I haven't uh, you know, talked about. But I think we better proceed. We're going out of time. So um, now, what is the conjecture which uh, we, well, when I say we, I mean me and my PhD student, Yasushi Ikeda, which we worked on from 2021. Um, let Xi capital be a numerical matrix, uh, and we consider the operated partial sub Xi composed of just, just quasi-derivations 
multiplied by coefficients of this matrix. So this operator gives you a map from UGLD to UGLD, and you can apply this operator to any two elements in the center of the universal enveloping algebra. Uh, so we can judge it first, and then we proved it, so that it is appeared in um, the recent paper, uh, that the commutator of these two elements will vanish. And this is actually quite well um, based conjecture. It has been a well based conjecture. First of all, of course, when you, if you look at the classical part, so to say, of this quasi derivation applied to F, you obtain just the usual derivation in the direction of Xi. So that gives you uh, the incentive to prove this. And then there have been several computations, explicit computations, with uh, traces of matrices done by Yasushi, and they are all commuted. Uh, then Yasushi managed to prove that uh, mm, some very very ingenious explicit formula for the traces, for, for the partial derivation, quasi-derivation applied to these traces, uh, that when you uh, do this one time, when P and Q are equal to one, this formula holds. And actually, uh, I last year I managed to prove that this holds for the generators of the first type. Now here is the proof of a general case. It has been published in the archive and actually it's been recently uh, accepted for the publication in Journal of Geometry and Physics. And uh, um, so this result holds for all P and Q. And the proof is based on the following theorem by Rybnikov, uh, which actually I already cited it, but this time I just give you an explicit formula for the elements which we need to centralize to end up in the algebra ahead sub psi. So there are, he, here they are. Well, there should also be LII, so the diagonal elements on the, on the, on the matrix, but also this TK, sub, TK of psi, which are equal to the sum of all J not equal to, uh, to K of these combinations, of these linear combinations of elements in universal enveloping algebra. So the proof is actually quite um, simple. So first of all, we reduce the general uh, situation to that uh, when the Xi is diagonal matrix with distinct eigenvalues. This is done just by the virtue that, by that, by that con the consideration that the, 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 the group GLD acts on UGLD and acts on quasi derivations, and that every matrix except for very few ones can be uh, by conjugation uh, sent into to, uh, diagonal matrices, diagonal matrix with distinct eigenvalues. So we have a dense subspace. If we prove this for diagonal matrices with uh, distinct eigenvalues, we shall have a dense subspace on which the conjecture will hold. So it will hold identically for all matrices of Xi, whatever we take, just by continuity. Uh, then the rest is done just by induction. We begin with the evident, evident, evident equation that F commutes with anything we need it commute to when uh, it is just from the center. And then we apply the operator D sub Xi to this, uh, this uh, mm, the uh, commutator. So this hat is should should be removed. Uh, yeah, again, um, misprint, which is which has been due to <laughs> this co compiling this element from two. So you, for instance, here is how you prove that uh, whenever A commutes with L I I, it will commute with uh, its its derivation will commute with L I I as well. So we just apply D D Xi to L I I A apply to A L I I and compare the results. So the left hand sides will be equal, right hand sides will also be equal, and the left hand side, um, the right hand side uh, will differ only at these terms. So these terms should be equal if the left hand sides coincide. And the same is done for uh, the elements T hat I of Xi. But this time you need to do some kind of a little bit more work. You need to do double induction, uh, including this. And you will need also uh, the explicit formula for the first derivation, 
which I mentioned, which has been proved by Yasushi. So this is some technical. So I'll in a few moments I still have. Yeah, I still have about uh, five minutes. Uh, I'll mention few further extent, few further results which uh, obtained recently, and a few questions which remain totally unsolved. So the first and the most important probably is that the proof of commutativity de uh, depends completely on Rybnikov's characterization result uh, and on the existence of a hat. You see, uh, unless we can use Rybnikov's result, we cannot prove directly that iterated quasi-derivations of the of <laughs> central elements will commute with each other. Uh, so this is kind of mystery. That means that we have we can prove something, but, but we don't don't understand why this is so. And uh, this is uh, all the questions um, here actually uh, are due to this uh, mis not understanding why it works as it actually does work in the case of GLD. Because actually, even in the case of GLD, it is remarkably interesting fact that even though the algebra had psi is generated by the operator partial psi in the sense we have just described. That is to say, if you take iterated elements, iterated derivations of central elements and you then generate everything in A psi. This algebra is not stable under this section. So to say, if you apply D psi to products of, of the elements which are in A hat psi, you end up out of A hat psi, which is not very expected uh, into something unexpected also if you try to extend this naively from gld to other lie algebras that is to say you embed this lie algebra g classically algebra g into gln for some uh, for some um, convenient for some um, nice for, 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 for proper and for yeah uh, for appropriate n, and try to restrict the operations, quasi derivations to this image. You obtain some operations on UG. That's not a problem. But these operations do not verify the property which we seek. They do not generate the uh, uh, a head sub psi in the way we expect. You know, cannot apply them to any element in the center and end up in a head sub psi. On the other hand, if you apply this, these operations, which you restrict from UGLD to UG, you apply them to a very nice set of generators of the center, the first set, uh, I mean, the first set, which I mentioned, and its variations for the different uh, Lie algebras, then you still get a very nice result. You get generators of a head psi. And this is uh, a very recent paper uh, which is joined with Alexander Molev and you see in an archive in, well, this is the number. So I think it is a good time for me to stop here uh, and five minutes remaining can be, you know, I will answer the questions if there are any. Thank you for the talk. So yes, we have five minutes for questions and discussion, please. Hey, uh, let me ask you uh, maybe stupid question. I'm uh, <laughs> I, I'm very weak in uh, in your field, but maybe uh, your results uh, uh, can be reformulated in the language of uh, differential equations or something like that. Well, uh, actually, actually, um, well, um, the original purpose of studying uh, argument shift algebras was to obtain uh, sufficient uh, quantity, quantity, sufficient number of uh, commuting first integrals of, of classical integrable systems on Lie algebras, uh -huh. and okay. they actually do, do give it. So if you now, now when you go from uh, Lie algebra from Lie algebras and uh, functions on Lie algebras, usual functions on Lie algebras to uh, universal enveloping algebras, you can actually regard this 
method as method which gives you some quantum integrable systems, quantum uh, differential. Actually, actually, these elements, these elements in UGLN which you obtain, you can you can regard them as differential as commuting differential operators in variables x, i, j. Mm -hmm. So obtain a very rich family of commuting differential operators. You can actually give a very one of the um, methods of defining uh, these quasi-derivations, which I mentioned but I never never talked about, consists of shifting differential operators on Lie group. So it's very geometric actually in some sense. So the ultimate purpose is to find some commuting families of differential operators. The ultimate purpose. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, more questions, please. So, if there is no, uh, let us thank the speaker again. And uh, we have uh, three minutes.